Right driver. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Stormwatch on this Sunday morning. It's a fairly quiet morning across the nation, but we will look at some wet weather in Texas and the Northeast and some very cool air now moving down into the north central part of the country. On the other side of things, we've got warmth and humidity and some tropical action to fill you in on. So let's go take a look at the latest. First stop is Bonnie moving out to sea at a brisk pace. The storm is actually moving at 40 miles per hour to the east northeast with top sustained winds of 60. The uh, center of Bonnie, 220 miles south southwest of St. John's, Newfoundland, in the Atlantic Ocean, of course, and the pressure continues to come on up. As you know, Bonnie is no longer a threat to the United States. And on the satellite picture here, you can see it moving briskly on the jet stream winds out the sea. But then there is Hurricane Danielle, about in the same position that Bonnie was located in about a week ago now, just east northeast of the uh, Bahamas, right about here, the island chain off the uh, coast of Florida. Bonnie, as you can see, is not the most well-developed hurricane, let's say, because in comparison to yesterday, there's not a lot of thunderstorm activity in association with it. Now, there's a nice uh, circulation with Bonnie. Uh, it's very symmetrical. There's good outflow upper levels, sea surface temperatures. While not uh, talking about Danielle here, of course, while the uh, sea surface temperatures are a little cooler than um, they are a little bit cooler due to the passage of Bonnie a week ago, they're still pretty warm. So while uh, uh, Danielle has uh, weakened somewhat, uh, not the uh, most organized looking hurricane at this time, further intensification is possible. Let's take a look at, uh, at the latest stats on Danielle. 26.7 north, 72.7 west, 260 miles east of Abaco Island in the Bahamas. The winds at 75, Storm is moving west-northwest at 10. That's a little bit slower than yesterday. And the pressure at 988 millibars. The big picture again, Bonnie moving away, Danielle approaching the east coast of the United States. Now, all the computer charts bring Danielle west-northwest on this Sunday, curve it to the north, though, on Monday, and then move it northeast out to sea as an upper-level disturbance in the jet stream winds approach approaches from the west. However, that turn to the north has not occurred yet. And uh, actually, since there is not that much in the way of thunderstorm activity with Danielle at this time, it could be influenced by winds a little lower in the atmosphere, let's say, and that may allow it to maintain its more west-northwesterly track for a little bit longer. So once again, that curve to the north offshore is not etched in stone yet. The turn to the north has not happened as of this time, although it is expected to. So those of you along the East Coast, of course, should continue to monitor this situation closely. Eastern Atlantic, a couple of disturbed areas of weather. One right here, a nice swirl. It's a tropical a wave with an upper level low to the east of it. There could be some organization in time. The island's very quiet. Danielle, east, well east of Florida now. Disturbed area of weather in the Gulf flare up of thunderstorms and general low pressure over the Yucatan Peninsula bears close watching because as it drifts northwest there could potentially be some slow development in the Gulf of Mexico the next uh, couple of days or so. The uh, water temperature is very warm and there's high pressure aloft, low pressure perhaps developing near the surface. We'll watch that area very closely. You folks on the Gulf Coast should monitor the situation. Eastern Pacific quiet, the remnants of Howard moving off to the west while Typhoon Rex is still south of Japan, but right now it is expected to miss the island of Japan. Unlike the forecast yesterday, which indicated perhaps Tokyo would get hit pretty hard, but right now it looks like uh, some good news concerning that big city in Japan. Back to the states, dry air on the water vapor loop, Oklahoma to Missouri, into Kentucky, another hot day in here. In the case of Oklahoma City, it may be near 100 degrees once again. Weak disturbed area of low pressure in the south and a weak cold front coming down through the lower lakes. Behind it, some cool Canadian air. Readings right now in the 40s over upper Michigan and northern Wisconsin. Few scattered storms moving off Virginia Beach, otherwise a couple of light showers. Catskills to the presidential range, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Warm and muggy through the south. High pressure dominates. 
But this weak wind shift line could be the trigger for some afternoon storms from the Carolinas and Georgia westward into Texas. Meanwhile, the Great Lakes dry thanks to high pressure. And look at this, 65 in Chicago, 46 in Marquette, 48 in International Falls, and a comfortable 55 in Minneapolis. Stay with us. All this atmospheric energy coming together. Drama, passion, suspense, tropospheric undulations. Every night on Weather Center PM. This program was sponsored by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. My mommy works really hard. She goes to work every day. She has to make money so we can buy stuff. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here at the Weather Channel. I'm Marshall Seas. You're tuned in just in time for Stormwatch. We'll cover the tropics for you. Full briefing on Hurricane Danielle and some other uh, situations that are occurring in the Gulf of Mexico. And then we'll take a look at your severe weather potential for today. Let's take a look at your tropical update now and show you first the last National Hurricane Center advisory for Tropical Storm Bonnie. Bonnie is finally out of the picture, becoming extra tropical. It's convection outrunning its center of circulation, which is located at 44.5 north and 51.5 west. It's 170 miles south-southeast of Cape Race, Newfoundland. Winds at 50 miles per hour now, and it's moving east at 35 miles per hour. That's a rapid movement to the east, and it's its pressure is now up to 990 millibars. Center of circulation back here, broad area now, and there goes the convection out ahead of it as we say goodbye to Tropical Storm Bonnie. What about Danielle? Well, here's the latest visible imagery. Danielle is still a strong hurricane, 75 miles per hour. That's still category one, but there could be some strengthening with Danielle. It's thought that Bonnie perhaps churned up the ocean out here, brought up some cooler deep ocean water as it did, and those cooler sea surface temperatures helping to inhibit the further increasing in strength for Hurricane Danielle. However, over time, that situation changes. Those sea surface temperatures warm again, and they're plenty warm enough anyway for possible intensification. So that is thought to be what will occur with Hurricane Danielle. It will increase in strength, but the good news still is that the National Hurricane Center forecasts a turn to the north and then a turn to the northeast over time. The center of circulation is at 27.1 north and 73.4 west. That puts it about 230 miles east of Great Abaco. It's about 30 miles closer than it was on the 5 a.m. advisory. Wind's still 75 miles per hour, but now it's moving northwest instead of west-northwest, which makes it a little further northward moving than westward moving, and its pressure at 988 millibars. Now it is forecast to begin to take a turn to the north, and by tomorrow should be turning in this direction, and then by Tuesday and Wednesday begin to move out to sea. Is that guaranteed? No. So we need to monitor the situation closely along the southeast coast and the east coast of Florida as 
any change in those forecasted positions would result from dynamics occurring elsewhere, one of which is an upper level low that's being discerned in the upper levels, the mid levels, the atmosphere on the west coast of Florida. We also have an upper level trough of low pressure that's been digging in the eastern seaboard, which will be a major player in the diversion of this hurricane. So stay tuned to the Weather Channel. We'll keep you advised as these situations change. We're going to be watching down here closely, too, in the Western Caribbean and the Western Gulf of Mexico for potential development. Lots of showers and thunderstorms, and the potential is pretty high that something could develop. Some of the computer models indicating that they will. And out in the mid-Atlantic and out in the East Atlantic, we have a wave that we're watching carefully for possible development too. That wave looked pretty impressive yesterday and we're going to be watching it as it moves out into the mid-Atlantic. Another developing could be a tropical depression later today off the coast of Manzanillo, Mexico and a typhoon that will brush by Japan be diverted to the northeast. Typhoon Rex. Potential for severe weather today likely to be in South Dakota and Nebraska. Make the smart move. Join the thousands of truck owners who've already put the load handler to work. Whether big or small, load handler works on any truck. From groceries to gravel, load handler handles every load. I'm Terry Jones, president of Load Handler Industries, and I personally guarantee your satisfaction. If you own a truck, you need a load handler. So make the smart move and call for your local load handler dealer today. who've bought homes through a Century 21 office tend to sleep better at night. Maybe it's because we're the number one real estate sales organization in the world. Or maybe it's because our agents have so much experience. Or it might just have something to do with the fact that when you buy a home, We've got some localized reports of severe weather in parts of the south and expected to be in the Midwest. More on that on Stormwatch after we take a look at the tropical update. And our main concern this hour on the tropical update is still Hurricane Danielle, which is getting too close for comfort to the eastern United States, no doubt about that. After tracking for days and days at a west-northwest clip through the Atlantic Ocean, uh, expecting that turn, we still are, but as you can see, if you didn't know any better, you just kind of figure this one was going to go the way Bonnie went, hitting somewhere in the southeastern United States. But the turn has already begun. We're looking at the center of the storm, 195 miles east-northeast of Great Abaco Island in the Bahamas, which is very close to Bonnie's track. And uh, except in places where the warm water runs very deep, Bonnie did uh, ma manage to upwell some cooler water along its track. And Danielle has been moving through some of that cooler water now only marginally warm enough uh, for tropical development, but it will be moving pretty generally out of that trend as time goes on and maybe picking up some strength. 75 miles an hour is a minimal hurricane. 987 millibars or 2915 on your barometer uh, has been holding pretty tough, but a northwest drift to 10 miles an hour now, that's the change from the west-northwest and the beginnings of what we think will be a curve that will take Danielle out to sea. Very well developed, in fact, getting better organized, if anything, today as we see things swirling right around the center. There is an eye in there, high clouds, intense rainfall, probably more intense than we've seen it in a couple of days. Some of the Bahama Islands now in partial sunshine, although the seas are very rough, some folks getting some showers, but generally this a threat over the ocean so far. As we see Danielle moving on up and the eye pretty visible for the first time in a while now in the center of that big cloud mass, these orange-yellow clouds, the highest that are indicative of very intense rainfall. Now there's an upper level low that has been steering the winds off from south to north. You could tell by the plume of clouds. And this cloud movement to the north and then to the northeast marks a very clear corridor for Danielle to move on up and out. It's an escape route, and hopefully Danielle will take that track out to sea. We are expecting it really not to get within more than 100, maybe not more than a couple of hundred miles of the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, don't go out in a small craft if you're along the coastline. Rough seas, dangerous rip currents for swimmers. Let's wait until Danielle gets out of the picture. But if all goes as planned and as forecast, according to the upper-level winds, we expect Danielle to go out to sea. We see it east of Florida right now. 
Backwards into the Gulf of Mexico, a tropical wave has been hitting parts of South Texas with some heavy rain today. And also, upper level winds forming a high pressure ridge over an area that could be developing our next tropical system. Probably if it does over the southern Gulf of Mexico, could be a depression or a storm in the next few days. Um, a, a depression may form even tomorrow at the earliest. So any interests along the Gulf Coast, you'll want to stay with us for what could be our next tropical development. We've had four now. The ladies have become the hurricanes. Bonnie, an intense hurricane. Danielle, um, not quite as intense. But Earl will be the next name on the list in the Atlantic Basin. Looking at Danielle and our chaotic situation in the Gulf and Caribbean. We were looking at a possible threat coming through. You can see that what's left of that not really experiencing much upper level support as we go into the eastern Atlantic Ocean, not really kicking up a lot of surf, but give it a chance if it gets in more favorable waters, we may be looking at that as another possibility for development. We, meanwhile, a relatively strong wave coming off the West African coastline, a lot of heavy, intense rainfall so that will have to be watched for possible development as it comes onto the Atlantic. Right now, some flare-ups in the eastern tropical Pacific. Uh, nothing looking very threatening as the remnants of Howard move out over the ocean. And Rex, Typhoon Rex, looked like it was moving toward Japan, now taking a decided turn to the east, where we're hoping Danielle will be doing. No longer a threat to Japan. There is a cool front coming off the coast. A cool front in the northeast as well, as we're getting some showers in that area, but the most severe weather could be in the upper Mississippi or Missouri River Valleys, as some localized severe weather has been hitting the south, places like Baldwin County, Alabama. Uh, some of the counties near Atlanta, Georgia, have had severe warnings. There was a fatality, Lexington County, South Carolina, a tree fell on a vehicle, and somebody was killed today, so uh, not to be taken lightly. Right now, Duval and Nassau counties in Florida have severe thunderstorm warnings. More on this and the heat in Weather Center coming up next. Stay with us here on the Weather Channel. Find out if Hurricane Danielle will ever make landfall, plus a look at the weather conditions around the country, coming up on Weather Center right after your local forecast. Hi, Bob Vila here to show you a unique new Craftsman tool no home should be without. Craftsman Handy Cut Utility Cutters, the one tool you can count on for all kinds of tough cutting jobs. Craftsman Handy Cut does the job of utility knives, carpet knives, shears, shop cutters, and more. Look how tough it is to make a good cut through this damaged garden hose with a utility knife. Craftsman Handy Cut gets it done in one clean cut. It's a terrific small branch and shrub pruner. Shears or shop cutters can't trim vinyl flooring as easily as the Craftsman Handy Cut. Use the Craftsman Handy Cut to cut nearly any common household material, including rope, plastic, leather. Coming up a little bit later in Weather Center. Now, See, look, it's easy to forget there was a time when we had no way of predicting hurricanes. Storms like Bonnie could strike and kill without the warnings we take for granted today. Tonight, the Weather Channel's Mike Bono has the story of a man who survived one of the deadliest hurricanes ever to hit the U.S., a storm with no warning. It was September 21st, 1938. The storm swung in off the Atlantic, taking deadly aim on New England. 15-year-old Alvin Lawrence watched from his shoreline Connecticut home as low tide went a lot lower than normal. But uh, this time, it was, it was just a trickle. I mean, it, you could have walked across the river any place and not been above, certainly wouldn't have been above your knees and most places about your ankle. And uh, I thought, boy, this, this, this is different. Alvin now lives near Columbus, Ohio. He's retired, but memories of the storm surge and the damage he witnessed are vivid even 60 years later. I'd say that it was probably seven or eight feet high. It just, just looked like looking at the front of a waterfall. And, and it was just coming right across the meadow. We just really didn't believe what we were seeing. I mean, it was, a, I would say, an eight or nine foot wall coming through there. And it was just white and foam and just, just rushing on in at us. So powerful, it literally picked up ocean-going boats and pushed over a terrain like a toy under a Christmas tree. Everywhere he looked, there was death and incredible destruction. Well, I remember a place called Brantford Point it was the town harbor, and there were dance halls down along, right, right on the rocks, right out to the water. And every one of those was gone. It was just bare rocks afterwards. And even today, as he watches the instant coverage and instant warnings about hurricanes like Bonnie. I can't imagine anyone being willing to stay there knowing there's a hurricane coming through, because there's, there's nothing to stop it. For the Weather Channel, I'm Mike Bono. Well, if you're heading back to work or school tomorrow, we have your road That'll be 11 o'clock update.
I'm Paul. I'm at the Weather Channel. It is time for Stormwatch. And with Stormwatch, we'll talk about the active weather of our night, including big storms around Las Vegas and Clark County tonight. Also, we'll talk tropics with our tropical update. We'll begin there with a look at the tropics and with Hurricane Danielle. Currently 210 miles to the uh, east-northeast. We'll back up to that frame there and have a good look at that there. 210 miles to the east-northeast of Great Abaco Island. Its winds and sides sustain around 80 miles per hour, although there have been uh, some reports that uh, there's, there's some gusts outside of here. Now, there is a possibility it may strengthen just a little bit further. There is that possibility. Uh, it has gone up uh, since last observation with 75 miles per hour, but still a marginal uh, you know, hurricane at uh, around 80 miles an hour. This is not a really strong one, but it's still a hurricane nonetheless. Uh, may increase just a bit. The actual forecast has it potentially doing that. Also, looks like now more of a northerly trek. Now, it's making a northwesterly movement now. Very slow, as you can see, six miles per hour. A little kick from some winds from the southeast should help to kind of eject it further away from the coast, let it move northward. That's good news. We don't want to see any interaction with land here again. If you're along the water, what might you expect? Well, you could expect the surf to come up and also rip tides, which were a great problem, an incredible problem throughout the Carolinas, even up to Atlantic City uh, throughout uh, the past week with the problems there associated with what was once Hurricane Bonnie. Uh, that could cause us more problems along the coast with, again, the potential for riptide and kick our surf up a bit. Not as bad as with Bonnie, because Bonnie came in a lot closer. It looks like, again, the trend should be to get it uh, out of the way. Here's a look at the vantage point right there. And thought we had that uh, image taken out of there, but you can see until the last image here. This right there, there's a circulation that is presently known as uh, Danielle. That's its present position. You can even see from this image, a little better image here to look at, where you see the orange there, that orange shade, that shows where the, the biggest batch of convection or the stormiest, the coldest cloud tops inside the hurricane reside. Counterclockwise motion, you spot the area of low pressure spinning pretty easily there. Pretty uh, classic looking uh, hurricane there. You can also see its proximity to the coast, but again, it makes a little further northwest where progress and it gets that kick and not out of the question, it may not interact with land, but it's highly unlikely at this point. It looks like the most uh, uh, possible position or the most likely scenario would be that it would move northward and uh, keep us uh, out of the threat here along the coast. But we'll stay on top of it for you at the Weather Channel. Frame of reference there is, of course, Danielle. And right here is a spot that uh, really is of great concern in the Bay of Campeche now. There's a spot that has a lot of uh, high pressure way up there. It creates kind of a stable environment or a safe harbor where an area of low pressure literally has a spot it can intensify in as opposed to being ripped up. It's at a spot where it could continue. A little area of disturbed weather here. A little moisture being slung in here, too, from the eastern Pacific. Uh, the uh, uh, flow aloft has been bringing a little moisture in for this thing to use. So should this thing intensify, it should do, it so, do so rapidly. In the next 24 hours, this may become classified as a tropical depression, as it is now just an area of disturbed weather. But it could become, again, a tropical depression within 24 hours. Another problem here because of its proximity to land throughout the Gulf Coast and its rapid development potential. It means along the Gulf Coast anywhere could be a problem spot. Uh, Official forecast position has that if it does indeed spin up into something, it may move somewhat onto the northwest. Again, kind of a northwesterly direction or a northerly direction would mean potential problems along the Gulf Coast. We'll keep you informed of this at the Weather Channel. If it should go on to become as classified as a system, it would be Tropical Storm Earl. If it does, if in fact, to reach that position, of course, uh, Francis being the next name on the list there as well. Here's a look at the big picture and deal, we're dealing with this here right here. Again, uh, the Bay of Campeche, also, of course, Hurricane Danielle, which left the body being slung out to sea. Look at a couple of waves, a couple of spots of interest to move across from um, the uh, Cape Verde region, Western Africa, and that's a source region for a number of tropical waves that come off the coast this time of the year. Around the Cape Verde Islands, there's the Western coast. The waves themselves are a bit up here, moving along on the south side. That's where you see the convection with these waves as they start to make that to move across the ocean. Another spot being monitored. Area disturbed weather way south of Baja, that may be classified as a tropical depression before too much longer. There's a possibility of that as well. Also, we have a typhoon known as Rex. Typhoon Rex there. You can see Japan. There's proximity here. Uh, official forecast track has that it may move about 100 miles just a bit on uh, 100 miles to the north of Tokyo as uh, the typhoon does interact with landing. It is forecast to move on in here over the next couple of days uh, toward Japan. Across the contiguous 48, here's a look at uh, current weather, including storminess across the west, some scattered storms in the southeast, even around Florida. Pretty stormy day. Stormy spot right now, though, with a severe thunderstorm watch in effect, parts of South Dakota and Nebraska. Pretty stormy spots here, kind of south of Valentine, north and north Platte, and towards Sioux City, Iowa. We may bring some storms here shortly. Also along the Gulf Coast, a little bit wet, too, around Lake Charles, and also in parts of Louisiana into Texas. Still showery now. Around Austin, quite stormy earlier. A lot of wind. Around Beaumont, too, we had some wind damage reported and some power lines down for a while. 
Very wet, very windy, too, around Clark County, around Vegas. Bear that in mind here. A little bit longer. Carolina's pretty wet, even kind of wet, too. Also into uh, portions of Florida, around Brooksville, had an injury earlier due to lightning in this region. Here's where we're headed for the morning. Storms on the move into Iowa, northern parts of Missouri. Yeah, pretty quiet in the northeast. Shouldn't be too bad of a day. We'll look at the forecast specifically. Talk more about tonight's active weather. Get us ready for a work week with Weather Center next. We're keeping a close eye on the tropics where Danielle is making a move and a disturbance could in the near future. Plus, your weather just ahead on Weather Center. Yves Saint Laurent Eyewear by Luxottica. What do you want people to do?